So this is not to say that Satan is not a name, like I said, but uh, it, it, it's becoming it's become more of a title uh, over time. So whoever rules over almost anything um, is going to hold the name Satan. Um, and the same is usually said for uh, for Lucifer. Now, off this, we have the final guys. All right, and I say guys because we have two devils that reside over this, okay? We have Moloch, and we also have Satan. All right, and this is something you'll see in, in if you decide to look this up for yourself, you will usually only see Moloch and never ever Satan. Uh, I don't know why that is, I can't answer that, but that is usually how you see it. However, in further description, you will always see Moloch and Satan. Um, now, uh, a different spelling for Moloch is Malik. And that's why I said we have to remember Samael's other name is Adremelech. And Malik, like I said, um, over time has changed because of this being. While Moloch started out as a god, uh, the methods of approaching Moloch and what Moloch wanted from people uh, became more devilish. So he is known for child sacrifice and fire. Um, so Malik has become, instead of gift, uh, has become sacrifice. Uh, so this is this is going to be one of your your strongest demons in this series. If Spada goes along with this, as well as Satan. Now for Satan, uh, it's it is going to mostly depend on your source. So it's very hard to say at this point, but in my theories, I attribute Satan to also mean Lucifer. Now, let's just talk about the names because so far we have Lucifero and we got a Lucifugis. Lucifugis, okay. Or, no, it was just that. The other one was the correct spelling, by the way. So, Lucifer or Lucifugis. And right now we have people saying that, you know, Lucifer is um, Lucifer of this series. And while that can definitely be true, uh, I'm not going to say that anything is wrong per se. You just have to stay consistent, that's all. So, uh, with if we think that, then we have to understand, like, Okay, if we go back to the first two devils that we just saw, why would Tabata use the actual names Lilith and Nama, who were actually attributed to this in lore, and not use the actual name Lucifer? So this is my whole uh, my my whole mode of of operation here is that that's why I don't think Lucifero is your actual like he doesn't belong here. Lucifero belongs here, okay? Um, and and to go back to the names here, we have Lucifuge Rofocal. You will see this in uh, in a lot of the layouts that you'll see of the clip art. And we have to understand that Lucifer and Lucifuge are completely different, especially Lucifuges. So Lucifuge means to flee light, while Lucifer means the bringer of light. So Lucifuge is the antithesis of Lucifer within the clipot, okay? So that's something very, very important to understand. Uh, and then we have the name Rofocal. Now, there are a couple of different things uh, as far as the second one goes. And, and the first one is that this is just another way to say Lucifer backwards, right? Uh, Refical, uh, and then just turned it into Refical. Now, the other one is also uh, a play on the name Focalor, Focaler, which is another demon within the clipot, I believe resides in actually one of the pathways. Um, not sure how much stress Tabata is going to put on the pathways, uh, but they are usually pretty important as far as ascending and descending the tree. Um, so I, this is, this is the important thing to understand is that 
Lucifer and Lucifuge are two different beings. Uh, however, I'm going to show you the, the translation of the Book of the Red Dragon, uh, where they do talk about uh, Lucifer and Lucifuge. So, here we have, this is what he looks like. This is Lucifer. Uh, this is the, how they painted him. Just looks like a just ugly ass dude, to be honest. <laughs> um, and, and just upset. Uh, but within this book, we are given sigils. And this is his sigil here. And then a description. So I'll read it to you. The first conjuration in the Grand Grimoire is addressed to Lucifer, prince and master of the rebel angels. The second and third conjurations are also addressed to Lucifer, and he is praised as 100, uh, 100 kingdoms call unto Lucifer. He makes the promise cited in the Grand Grimoire and can thus be interchangeable with Lucifer Focal. Now, they say he can be interchangeable with Lucifer Focal, as I said uh, previously, that you'll see some of these layouts uh, have just the word Lucifer in there. Now, it goes on to say, although he is distinguished by citing Lucifer Focal as his prime minister. So they say right here, even though they are, uh, they are interchangeable, uh, Lucifer himself uh, made Lucifer Focal a separate entity. He is the uh, prime minister of hell. Well, Lucifer rules over it. So right there, they explain that these are two very separate beings. Uh, he describes himself thus, the powerful and supreme independent emperor, free and absolute master of all subterranean kingdom, despotic lord in all jurisdiction, uh, sagacious, oh, formidable, formidable, terrible, very noble, who governs all fortune, all sages, wise, sagacious, fortuitous, and sublime, bright character. I am the dominator of Europe and all misfortunes of Asia in particular. So this is his capacity. And like I said, I, I wanted to stress the importance that, yes, while you do see Lucifer in some of these layouts, Lucifer himself uh, made Lucifer Rofocal his prime minister, meaning Lucifer Rofocal uh, serves under Lucifer directly, which is why his name is so close to Lucifer. On the previous page, we have Lucifuge Rofocal, okay? And uh, I believe this is also a, a way of depicting it as well. That's Lucifuge. This is the sigil, and I'm going to go on with the description. So Lucifuge Rofocal is the primary spirit in the Grand Grimoire. Like I said, he goes over all the contracts, so this is the one you have to summon before you do anything else, essentially. He is the one with whom the pact is made and governs the superior and subordinate spirits. He is the infernal prime minister. He has the power that Lucifer grants him over all wealth and all treasures of the world. So again, it says Lucifer grants him this power. He has under him Bile, Agares, and Marvis, and thousands of demons or spirits who are his subordinates. Okay, so as I've been saying, it's very important that we distinguish the two. I'm going to go on because this next part is more depth on to Lucifer Focal, his name, his capacity, and it also goes over something that we just saw in Black Clover. Uh, and this is what I'm saying. It goes back to how I told you guys how like Satan is a title. We have Lucifer and anything else is also known as more so a title. Uh, as opposed to being just the name. Uh, if anything, the name of this demon is Rofocal, which is a play on a different demon, uh, Focal, fo Focal, or what? I forget how to how to say it. But um, to go into that, this one's a bit long, but very very worth the listen. Okay. So we have Lucifer Focal is, according to the Grimoire, the prime minister of the underworld. The very name is symbolic since in Latin, Lucifuge comes from the name Lux, the light, and the verb Fugio, fleeing, thus designating the one who flees the light, which is the opposite of the name Lucifer, as I said before, which means the light bearer. The name Rofocal is the reverse name of Lucifer, Refuco, Rofocal, symbolizing that he is the opposite of Lucifer by his name and surname. The name Lucifuge is first found in the 11th century with, uh, within Michael uh, Celis's De Operation Demonium. Uh, it's just how the demonic compendium works. 
uh, adding to the hierarchy of demons first found in the Im I am I am Blickus and the Neoplatonus. Um, he counted off six species of demons, and first he mentioned, uh, this is really interesting, uh, and it's going to come up uh, pretty soon here. Uh, he counted off six species of demons, and first he mentioned Lilirium, 23, speaking in his barbarous vernacular tongue, a name which signifies igneous. This order of demons haunts the air above us, for the entire Genus has been expelled from the regions adjacent to the moon as a profane thing with us would be expelled from a temple, but the second occupies the air contiguous to us and is called by the proper name, Ariel. The third is the earthly, the fourth, the aqueous and marine, the fifth, the subterranean, and the last, the lucifugis, which can scarcely be considered sentient beings. You see the name lucifugis there, right? I'm going to keep going and then we'll kind of hop back into that. So all these species of demons are haters of gods, uh, of God and enemies of man, and they say that the aqueous and subterranean are worse than the merely bad, but that the lucifugus are eminently malicious and mischievous for these, said he, not merely impair men's intellects by fantasies and illusions, but destroy them with the same alacrity as, as we would the most savage wild beasts. The aqueous suffocate in the water all that approach them. The subterranean and lucifugus, if they can only uh, insinuate themselves into the lungs of those they meet, seize and choke them, rendering them epileptic and insane. The grand the grand grimoire takes pains to indicate uh, takes pains to indicate that the operator must not agree to initial demands of lucifugal Focal to surrender himself to the spirit. Uh, I cannot agree to your demands unless you agree to surrender yourself to me in 20 years to do with your body and soul as I please. Now, this part is uh, is important because it goes back to the legend of Faust. In the legend of Faust, we have to remember that Osroth or Mephistopheles within that story uh, is contracted with Faust for about 20, 22, or 24 years. Um, and for this exact reason, to give to Lucifer. Uh, and that's... So, Lucifuge Rofocal does not directly reveal himself. He sends Osteroth instead uh, to work in that capacity for him. Okay? So, that's that's very important to note, and that it lines up with this, uh, this grimoire. Uh, it goes on to say, he must instead insist on keeping his soul inviolate and that the spirit must accede to his demands in the names of the most holy lucifer ends up uh, obeying the carcass the person invoking him uh, so that he will no longer be beaten by the blasting rod now this is a tool used so that remember like i said these devils are still summoned for their usage uh, however uh, they do strive to come back to the world of the living um, and tamper with the the things that dwell within it um so they have these tools so that they can summon these beings uh, and not and bypass the the uh, the more strenuous parts of the contract, such as like bargaining your soul um, or someone else's soul or your riches or whatnot. Uh, so this is what they refer to as the blasting rod. Uh, the Carsis then states his demands. The spirit must appear to him or to the one who will be in possession of the grimoire. In addition, the Carcis asks for the location of the nearest treasure in exchange for returning a gold coin to Lucifuge on the first day of every month, just like rent. The demon not wishing to become a slave accepts on one condition. So this is the point of this grimoire is to tell the user not only how to invoke these spirits, but to also essentially take advantage of them uh, and make them your slave. Uh, and of course, the demon. Of course, the higher up, the the stronger the fight is gonna, or the stronger the demon and the tougher the fight's gonna be. So, loose Pedro Vocal is just not gonna go down without a fight of some sort. Um, and they relay this in a way where it's more like a they're bargaining uh, with words, uh, and with this blasting rod. So it says, I cannot grant you what you ask of me under these conditions or under any other. If you do not give yourself to me in 50 years to do with your body and your soul what I like. So notice that it goes from 20 years 
to now 50 because the blasting rod was now used to kind of whip Lucifuge into shape. Like, look, I'm not going under those demands. You're going to listen to me. And so Lucifuge, in an effort to kind of dupe this guy, or the Karsis, the one invoking him, uh, saying like, okay, I can't do any of this unless you give me uh, the coin and your, your body and soul 50 years. So he upped it to make it more attractive. So in almost... In an almost story-like fashion, the book explains that uh, the will of the devil is only to possess the sorcerer and to make him a slave. To punish him for his rebellion, the Karsis then plunges the wand into the fire to make the demon suffer until he submits, which he does finally end up doing. So, again, as I've said, they have these tools that help them in these bargaining, uh, these, these bargaining duels, if you will. And this wand is directly correlated to the demon sitting within this magic circle, and as they burn it, it burns the demon sitting there. So this is helping them uh, draw the power of the devil while not succumbing to the devil itself. Uh, he then approves the pact and signs his true signature to it. He also promises to deliver the treasurer's location under three conditions. Keep this secret always, that you are charitable toward the poor, and that you grant me one piece of gold or silver on the first day of every month. If you miss this, you will be mine forever. So this is the pact that they end up going with, uh, usually. So uh, it's much less than having your soul torn from you within 20 or 50 years. Um, instead, just pay like a small fee every month. It's like an OnlyFans for Lucifer Future Oful Cow. Um, and, and he's good, but if he does miss it, then his soul will be torn from him and used however Lucifer Future Oful Cow wishes. Uh, so the pact of the devil is realized. He has approved it and is subject to the sorcerer to whom he must now obey without being rebellious. However, should the wizard make the slightest error, the demon will be there to take his body and soul. Such pacts were commonplace in occult writings from the first century tale of Theophilus of Adana, who sold his soul to the devil to retrieve his church offices and the more important, the more contemporary priests of London, not London, Loudon, uh, Urbane Grandier, who neglected to hide his packs from the devil, packs with the devil, while ministering to the Ursuline nuns, leading him to be burned at the stake. The pact of Urbane Grandier, autographed by him in his own blood, can be found in the Bibliothèque Nationale, and appears to be drawn from the Grand Grimoire. At the end of the ritual, the Carsus has everything he had desired. Through God's help, the devil is under his command and delivers access to a treasure or whatever else the spirit might have been called to deliver. The spirit is then returned to his kingdom. Now, this is very, very interesting um, and further goes into why we get these demons that are so angry with everything, right? Because it says through God's help, the devil is under his command. So not only did God throw these guys into hell, but he's helping these sorcerers uh, enslave these devils for their own ends. Right? So uh, this is why, like, I, I mentioned this a few times throughout this channel, that within all of this, you very rarely have stories about angels and uh, what powers they have over. Uh, it's because that people end up turning to devils because they're more accessible and uh, they can be taken advantage of uh, through the power of God should the practitioner uh, go that route. Now, once the promise of the spirit is made, the Karsus follows him to the treasure. The magician's assistant must remain within the triangle within the magic circle. He is first blocked by a large dog, a gnome, the elemental earth spirit reputed to protect treasures. Go figure. The magician brandishes the blasting rod and the gnome leads him to the treasure. When the magician arrives at the treasure, he must throw a sheet of parchment over the treasure on which is written uh, the conjuration of the key while taking a piece as a token of recognition and throwing a coin of his own money, which he will have bitten before to the demon. They bit the coin to make sure it wasn't fake. Uh, the sorcerer must go back and forth through the treasure without looking back even if it seems as if all the mountains of the world will topple over on him. Once the Karsis is back in the Kabbalistic circle that protects him, it is time for him to return the spirit to its normal abode in hell or wherever that may be, 
the latter having fulfilled his duty for the moment. The spirit is also reminded to think about your commitment because if you miss it for a moment, you can be sure that I will strike you forever with the lightning rod of the great Adonai, Elohim, Ariel, Jeho uh, Jehovah. Amen. The sorcerer then thanks the devil for what he did and allows him to return home in peace. He warns the demon that he must withdraw in silence without doing any bad deeds or trying to rebel. In the end, he reminds him of, of his commitment and threatens him with the power of the blasting rod. Finally, he thanks God for helping him survive the ritual and bestowing his grace and blessing upon him. Okay, So this is the whole description of uh, how Lucifer Focal is summoned and exactly how they're coached into really enslaving him through the power of God and these tools uh, to use him to their own end. Uh, and so, of course, you would think, hey, um, you know, if that was me, I'd be upset too, right? I mean, anyone would be upset in that situation. But this is, that, that's the exact hierarchy. This is what we have to, to take note of, right? So in, in my theories, when I talk about Lucifero, um, it's here and he is not the big bad. The big bads have yet to take shape in this story. Um, well, in a way. Because if you've been following this channel, I believe that Satan slash Lucifer, the real Lucifer, with no added a left to that name, um, is Liebe. And uh, I, I still hold this theory. Um, and not to go into it in depth, I know that we just saw that uh, Liebe pretty much says that he was in this clip um, when he was just a kid. Uh, which makes sense if you were thrown, and this is the world of the living. Uh, it, it's that seal, which does make sense. It makes total sense. Um, however, speaking in con in a contextual manner, how shallow is this story that you're given? That Leah Bay was here, he was yeeted out of it, and now Lilith and Nama are just dead. That's a very shallow story. Um, so that's why I believe there's much more to it. And if you guys are curious and you haven't seen uh, that theory yet, um, I do suggest just scouring the channel. Uh, I talk about it a lot. Um, and it goes in, this really goes into like the Espada theory. I think it's looking much more prevalent right now. Um, one of the other things I did want to touch on are the pathways. So there are 22. We have a path from here to there, there and there, uh, there and there. We'll start with the outside ones first. Very obvious. Then we have them going straight up. Straight across. Uh, right there. And then diagonals. Again, all connecting. here so if i drew this right we should have 22 we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 15 16 17 18 19 i forgot that these are actually separate so it gets a little confusing uh let me count again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 let, um, this one's split up because we have other pathways. We'll, let, we'll say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, the not only just the names but just descriptions of these devils um well i do know where to find those uh without having a description it's very very tough to include them in the story which kind of leads me to question whether tabata is going to include them or not um but it does give him a lot of writing space um one of my theories for zagrid is that you know he belongs to one of these pathways um and if not he belongs to the outside of it uh, which I did just talk about, I believe. Um, but yeah, uh, this is where chaos, void, and darkness exist. Um, uh, and destruction and all that stuff. So, in the middle here is Da. 
And this is the pathway. This is not the pathway, but the doorway to hell, the doorway to the Klippot. And the one who rules over it is actually Belial or Adam Belial or Belzebub or Baalzebub. Um, so what makes this character so interesting is that when we look at uh, the formation of of hell and how he was the ruler until these guys fell uh, instead of when they they actually end up having this meeting and it's so funny that um, it, it's it includes other um, other uh, demons from different uh, uh, cultures I'm I'm losing my uh, the word for for that but um includes you know demons from other cultures and uh they they have this meeting and it involves not just these devils but it includes like greek devils and uh also uh, lovecraftian devils which are sometimes canon and not canon but there are some that have made it into uh even the world of kabbalah from the lovecraftian sense so it's very very interesting but within this meeting uh we have uh, these guys uh, are pretty much running it where Moloch is just on a war path. He just wants to fight God and oppose everything he does. And Satan is more so against uh, humans in a sense. And then we have uh, Lucifuge who's there who is wanting to uh, worry about uh, he... I believe how it went was that he wanted to rule and he was just pretty much bitching the entire meeting. While Belial, instead of giving input, what he does is kind of uh, ditch everyone and he goes to explore the depths of hell, uh, the, the unknown depths of hell by himself. And what makes it even more interesting is that he finds new spaces and he also creates new spaces so this is one realm and he created new spaces and he actually created this exact layout uh that gives us the hierarchy uh and then he finds other realms that correspond to theirs so what i'm suggesting is that this here could be the like the reason why this story keeps going uh because within this meeting like i said we do have characters like hell uh in the greek uh, mythology um uh who else is there i'm sorry i'm forgetting names uh i didn't think i was going to go this far but uh maybe that could be a different video or just a thread on twitter um but this is the connection right uh to be able to create space we see um, Xenon's devil is able to, he has spatial magic. Now, whether he is the hierarchy, which he should be, um, that controls space, uh, you know, it makes a lot of sense, uh, and it does directly correlate to the lore. Uh, and this could bring us a whole new, uh, just, oh, why can't I think of the word? But just other, uh, elements to this. You know, more Greek elements, uh, more Germanic elements uh, by cr creating this portal to bring them into it. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought that was very interesting on that part. Uh, but to control the gateway is also very important, which is not attributed to uh, his correspondence on the Tree of Life, uh, where they are actually very separate. Now, something else to go over is that uh, Dot is in the Clipot. While it's on both the Tree of Life and on Clipot, uh, mean the exact opposite. Where uh, dots on the Tree of Life is known for this is knowledge and information. Uh, this is where knowledge stops. Okay, so this is the accumulation of knowledge, and Belial's whole motive is to stop that information from coming out, and he pretty much hoards it for himself, which is really indicative of what he did right by creating new spaces and also finding new spaces with new beings inside of them so uh i i if i were to put this uh 
and relate this to BC, I would say that we do see this look on, or this lack of look, if you will, on Xenon's face as he's holding Dante after he got bodied by Austin, uh, Yami, uh, is a look of like, okay, you know something that we don't. So what is that? Um, and this is where knowledge stops. So it stops with Xenon and Belial. Should that be his devil? Uh, so again, very, very interesting things going on. Um, in, in just to talk about what we're, what we can expect, uh, if Xenon's layout is correct and there are no mistakes anymore, uh, this was the first day. The second day is going to be ball. Uh, since it is mirrored that way, uh, we'll see if it's a mistake or not. Uh, once it opens, of course. And then we'll go this way to Samael, and then uh, it would be... Oh, God, now I'm confused. It, no, that's second and last day. So it should be uh, here and then here. Um, these are separate days because, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, because there are seven seals. Um, so this is one seal. Second seal, third seal, uh, fourth seal, fifth seal, sixth seal. Then this here, all three of them are the seventh. Okay. So while they are worried about Lucifero coming out, um, Lucifero is only your second highest of the three uh, principalities of hell. Uh, to go back to that, uh, the three. Uh, we have three infernal principles of hell. Okay, the three IPH was what we're going to call them. Which will be, in order of rank, Belial, Lucifuge, and Ostaroth. Okay? Those are your three. When they say three, they don't mean that it's this. Remember, they say these are the three pillars holding up the highest, okay? So, they are holding up Malk and Satan, this last clip here. Th that Those are the three that are going to... They, they pretty much keep everything in check. And as I noted, I believe, in, uh, in a Twitter thread, uh, this makes sense. If we have Belial as your first, look at who all is under Belial. Belial controls this, uh, I would say, the middle and right section here. Because he controls Dot, which is connected to everything here, and also everything here. So all of this is under his order. While we have Ostaroth right below, who just has this one. Okay, so he rules over just one other thing. Then we have Lucifugio Foucault, who controls this entire side, which gives him two other legions here. So, Belial rules more, Lucifuge rules the second most, and Osroth rules the least. Um, so, it makes sense as to why uh, they're laid out this way, as we see with the numbers, four, three, and two. Um, and as far as Black Clover goes... Osiroth is released on the second to last day. This gives them time to prep, because if he does act as the spy, he would be the strongest devil on the field. As we note, he's got a higher no or lower number, which means he is higher than the rest, which gives them time to prep and to essentially help out in wiping out these guys, uh, should it get that far. Um, but then we'd have to worry about the rest here because these are your three strongest all coming out at once uh now we have we explained lucifero and how why i think um uh tabata is not just using lucifero as the lucifer because again why use the exact names lilith and nama and then just you know uh, fall back on lucifero instead of lucifer um, you know, I don't think it's logical to go that way, although it could. We just have to consider that we need to find out who's here. Um, and then we have Lucifugis, which we went over. 
This is more so a species of demon who are, it's called heliophobic. Uh, they, they are the ones who flee light. So Lucifugro Focal would fall under this. Um, Belial should fall under this as well. Uh, pretty much any devils in this area should fall under this uh, Lucifugis uh, uh, category. Uh, so this could be a demon that resides in a pathway. Uh, as they do say, this is one of the demons that supports the three pillars. Um, and so this is why I think the pathways are important to note here, because that could mean one of these guys. Um, and if so, that would be very, very interesting, because uh, then Tabata is adding even more elements into this. Uh, as there are so many, as you guys already know, if you've been a fan of this channel, um, there are elemental things behind this. There are also planetary signs behind this. Um, and just to circle back, um, as I said, I was going to. Uh, the only one that does not get a planet, uh, instead gets a star, is Belphegor in this. Uh, he, this is the Black Sun. And uh, what's what's interesting is that, you know, we are... Um, the things that we have come to know about the tree of life and uh the tree of death are also um astrological uh and this is this comes down to a very scientific point of view and these things all correlate this is how people back in the day made sense of everything uh how this was a very heliocentric model uh as opposed to a lot of people thinking that everything revolved around the earth which is actually just down here, uh, the sun is in the middle of everything and everything revolves around it. As we see, it's connected to everything. So uh, this is this was one of the more groundbreaking ideologies uh, coming into, uh, I believe it was the 11th century. So it's, uh, it's all very interesting. It has scientific proponents. It's got um, philo philosophical components. Um, as well as just straight-up mythology and lore that connects to a, a lot of different lore across time and cultures. So uh, I, I think I'll stop here. I, I could keep going, but there's a lot of marks on this, and now it looks like a, a crazy mess. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know if this makes sense to you in the comment section below. But I, for the main part, I really hope that the layout makes sense and what Lucifero and Lucifugis um, now makes sense as far as you know some of these names being titles as opposed to just names so that's kind of the point that i wanted to get across as, as well as getting the three infernal principalities of hell in there um and why and how they're uh, important and, and whatnot so just let me know what you think about this in the comment section below um willing to do more in-depth stuff if you guys need it uh, but like I said in the beginning, I just kind of thought it was needed as it doesn't seem like a lot of people fully understood what was going on uh, to begin with. So uh, so hopefully this did answer those questions. Uh, and yeah, this has been Jack Let's Go. It's still Magna. It's still Magna season. It's still Magna season. You either know or you don't.